This slide is probably one of the more complicated ones you will do because it just has so many elements on it. In order to help you out, I'm going to have a link in the description that'll take you to a template document that you can download, and it has some of the items in this video that you can kind of repurpose very quickly for other videos. In order to show you a preview of what's about to happen, I'm gonna drop down, I'm gonna click on the icon here for sound, and I'm just gonna drop the volume down. And this is actually how you can control volume on each slide as it's going through the presentation if you find, say, a video has too much sound or something. Now, let's click preview. And you'll see there's a zoom in effect. You have like these boxes coming in and BF Skinner's name showing up. How do you create this? First off, let's create a new slide. And I need to get the image on there. Of course, I'm going to find a image of BF Skinner that I'm using under fair use or is not copyrighted. Once I have that, I can insert in two ways. One, I can go to insert and I can do pictures, this device, if it is already at the folder that I need, I can click on that, click insert, and there you have it. It'll drop it in. It'll also then trigger the design ideas, and I can click on this one, and pretty much that is done. I'm going to hit control Z and work my way out. The other way you can add the item is to go to your folder that you have all of your images in. This is one reason I like to kind of keep everything organized, and then just drag it onto there, and again, it'll repeat. I can click on that and we're done. Now, one thing that you probably want to do, especially if you're adding a lot of elements onto a slide, is to name items. So in order to name items, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna to go to Selection Pane. So this is in the Picture Format option, Selection Pane. And you'll see that there's this rectangle nine. That's actually what PowerPoint adds for like that image uh, cropping but the picture for is BF Skinner. So I'm gonna just click on that and then type in BF Skinner. This will help me know that this is this image and not, for example, something else. So if I had multiple images, especially if I was doing something like transitions, it just keeps everything straight. So that's a really cool uh, tip or trick uh, that you should use. And if you like that one, go ahead and hit the like on the video as well as subscribe. So let's go ahead and then add our first element, which is going to be that zoom in effect. And we, we know that's going to be the first thing to trigger anyway. So I'm going to go up to animations. What I'm going to do is choose emphasis because we don't want it like flying in or an entrance. We don't want it leaving. We want it to do something while it's already there. And the grow and shrink is a really nice one for just kind of a pan zoom in effect, okay? Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do then is to make sure that it's got the timings that I want. Now I can right click, I can do some things that way, or I can go up to animations and I can click on animation pane and you'll see it pops open this. Now this actually gives me then, when do I want it to start? What's the duration and what's the delay? So let's say that I wanted to delay that effect by just a few sort of, you know, uh, not even a, a quarter of a second. I can do that. I can also say I want it to last longer. So let's go ahead and preview it. Zooms in. Let's preview it with a five second delay. And you will see the effect is much, much slower, okay? You also see on this that as I'm changing it, it is growing or shrinking. Watch the time, so I can drop the time and you'll see that bar dropping. I can also grab it and I can drop it to say three seconds and it's going to change there. So it's saying three seconds total for the delay plus the duration, okay? I can also just grab it and slide it and then there's no delay at all. So I don't know if you knew that in PowerPoint, but it's pretty easy. Now, once I've opened up the animation pane and if you recall from the picture format, I can also do selection pane. They will be open if you're using the PC version over here. I can just kind of click on them and work my way back and forth, okay? That actually makes it a lot easier for a lot of the things we're about to do. The next thing I want to do then is add one of those boxes. To do that, I'm gonna to go to Insert, and I'm going to select Shapes, and I'm going to choose a box. Then I'm going to drag that box onto the item. I can position it wherever I want, create the size that I want, and then I can change the color. I can either right-click on it, and down here, change fill. Let's go ahead and go with purple this time as the starting image, or I can do it up here, shape fill, and that's under the shape format. I don't like outline, so let's drop to no outline. Okay, once you have that, 
What I can do then is add an animation. So I'm gonna to go to animation. I wanna choose fly in as my animation. And of course we don't want it coming from the bottom upwards. We actually want the effect option over here to be in from the left to the right, create that effect. Now I want this not to trigger on mouse click, but to trigger on previous. And I thought that I had set that on with previous as well, but I guess I didn't. So now I've changed both of these items. If I wanted to change it back to click, I can just do that and I'll show you click there. So let's change with previous. So it's going to trigger automatically. Now I can actually grab this item. I can extend it out. I can go like, you know, I want to delay on it. I want it to zoom all the way in on Skinner and then slide in. So you can see, let's watch that preview, zoom in and then slide in after it. So this is the principle you're going to use for designing all of these elements, right? I can actually extend it down and have it go out. So let's go ahead and watch that. Now it starts zooming in very slow and there you go. So again, I can delay it by just a little bit. So I know this one's gonna trigger at zero. I think I just moved it actually. Trigger at zero and then I know this one can be a little bit delayed 2.5 and I want the duration to be, you know, however long you want it to be. Let's go up here and see sort of what I've created um, for those effects. So for this one here, for example, I have it labeled as a rectangular six and I'm coming in at a duration of 0.5 with a delay of 0.6. So I'm having these move in pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and do that here. So the duration is going to be 0.5 but I might want just a slight delay, let it start zooming in and then delay to 0.25. Now I can then copy this, control C, control V. And as you can see here, the rectangle names are getting a little wonky. Why is it eight? Why is it not? So what I can do is I can come back up here I can go to selection pane and I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna label it rectangle one Go to this one and I'm gonna label it rectangle two. You can see why you want to sort of do this. And this rectangle nine is that entire image. Let's just call it the box, okay? Get rid of that one so it's not confusing us. And now I can say I want this to be yellow. Just so we can kind of see how that's looking. I wanna extend it out. And I wanna add, let's say, BF Skinner's entire name to it. So I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna type in BF Skinner. You can't read it because it is not black right now. I'm gonna hit control A while I'm in that box, right click, change it to black. I can bold up, I can change the size. Don't think I want it to be 80, let's go with 28. I can then go to home, I can center in, and there you have it. So we have already now two elements. Let's go back to animation pane and see what we have the second box doing. So on rectangle two with BF Skinner in it, go to animations here so I can actually see the timeline up here. And what I probably want to do is just delay this one just a tad bit more. So now let's check it out. There you go. I can keep doing this as much as I want. Let's say for example, now I wanna add another box. Let's actually draw it on. And I want it to be blue. But this one, of course, we want to have it, we want it to fly in, but we want it to come from the right to the left. So I'm gonna to go to effect options, choose from right. I'm gonna go up here to selection pane. I'm gonna relabel this instead of rectangle six, double click on that, rectangle three. Now, one thing I can do, as you can see here, this is now over that. Let's say I wanna drop it below, so it creates some kind of effect like this. All I need to do is actually drag this down. I don't have to use the send to back, and there you go, it drops that down. Isn't that beautiful? So now it's like hidden behind there, and you can just do that, or I can right click on it, and I can go to send to back and do that way as well. This will be a lot faster for you if you're using the selection pane. Okay, now, of course, let's go back to our animation pane and I don't want it coming in maybe before that so I want to delay by 0.5 and still keep it at 0.50 and now let's preview. Oh, I have it on the mouse trigger always remember with previous. Now let's preview it and there you have it. 
And so this is what you do to create that effect. Watch more time, hit preview, and beautiful. So, okay, so just keep building that out or use the template that I have provided.